So I'm Sue McAllister and I work for the AIDS Epidemiology Group. I'm the leader of the AIDS Epidemiology Group at the University of Otago in Dunedin. And so we've been contracted by the Ministry of Health for the last 30 years actually um, to do the surveillance of HIV and AIDS in New Zealand. So collecting the information on anyone who's been diagnosed with HIV or with AIDS over the years. So what I presented um, this morning, so in 2018, there were 178 people who were diagnosed with HIV. And the good news is that that is a decline from the previous two years. 2016 was the highest ever. 2017, the numbers declined. In 2018, a further decline. So really good news. And if we take the average over the previous five years, that was around a 16% decline. So that's really good. Mostly um, those people were men who have sex with men and the decline was mostly in those who were reported to be infected in New Zealand. So that was around, infected in New Zealand, that was around a 27% decline. Um, so again, really good news. Um, most of those men who have sex with men are European, but what we did see was a slight increase in the Maori men. These are very small numbers, but it's something that we will want to watch. Amongst heterosexual men and women, there has also been a gradual decline over the last few years. Very, very small numbers. I think the main concern with the heterosexual men and women is that they are diagnosed late. So around 50% of, of heterosexual men and women are diagnosed with a CD, a CD4 count less than 350 at the time of diagnosis. So their infection has occurred some years before. Then also with, um, we collect information on the mode of infection, so what we've also reported was um, injecting drug users. And one thing that we did note for 2018, that there were six people who were reported to have either been infected through male-to-male um, -male sex or injecting drug use in New Zealand. So that was the highest ever, so it was only six, so small numbers, but that was the highest that we've ever had of that um, MSM slash IDU um, ever since we've been doing the reporting. So that's just something else to watch. Um, so overall decline in numbers, slight concern about the Māori um, men and concern about the heterosexual men and women who are diagnosed late. The other thing that I presented this morning was around uh, some preliminary data on cascade of care. So of those who have been diagnosed in New Zealand and on our database between 2005-2017, how many are on antiretroviral therapy and how many have a suppressed viral load. So this is very preliminary data. Um, of the subset within that for whom we have an NHI and able to do quite good linkage with PharmAC data for antiretroviral therapy. There was around 86% 86, 86 of those were on ART. So that's really good and that's probably in line with uh, many other countries. Um, however, of those on ART, it was only 66% with a suppressed viral load. But the linkage that we're able to do with the laboratories is much more difficult and so I am sure that that percentage is much higher, but it's a limitation of what we're able to do with the data. Um, so this is very preliminary. We will do some more analysis over the next couple of months um, and do some sensitivity analysis to see what those numbers are looking like and hopefully have some final numbers out by the end of this year. Um, so that's basically the um, the crux of the presentation this morning. So I think by having an ongoing surveillance system, we, we can see what the numbers are doing each year. Um, we, we get the information around the ethnicity, um, the mode of infection, so it's particularly good for the organisations such as NZAF, um, the AIDS Foundation, in terms of their prevention work. For people living with HIV in New Zealand, I think particularly the cascade of care work of being able to see how many are on ART and how many are undetectable, it all builds 
what's the picture of what's happening with people so not just with people living with HIV as well as people who've been diagnosed with HIV who are they who are the people who are needing care in New Zealand for their HIV um, so who are the people being diagnosed and being infected who are the people needing ongoing care so this whole data set and the ongoing surveillance builds that picture um, that can inform clinicians, it can inform the prevention organisations, it can inform body positive, positive women of, of who those people are and needing, needing look, looked after and support, basically. Yeah. So I think for, for any country it's really important, if, if you're not checking the numbers, you don't know what's happening. You, we need to know. We need, we need to know. Obviously we want to see these numbers going down and by collecting the numbers we can inform, as I've just mentioned. Um, otherwise people are working in the dark. Um, so I think the surveillance system, and this is just the very basic surveillance system, obviously behavioural surveillance would, would link into this and provide even more information. Um, so this is the basic surveillance that any country needs to do for their HIV and AIDS.